What's going on all my toy collectors and turtle fans out there? You know who it is. It's your boy Ox and welcome to the Cave of Wonders. Now today we're going to be taking a look at wave two of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem Movie Figures by Playmate Toys. Now all four of these figures I found at Walmart but they're not Walmart exclusives. That's just where I was able to find them at. Let's go ahead and crack these babies open and take a closer look. All right guys. Okay, now let's start off with Scumbug first. This right here is the front of the box. You can see it has a clear package window showing you the characters that's inside and all of her accessories. That's right, I said her because in this movie, Scumbug is a female, not a male. Up at top, you can see the Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem movie logo right there and the four turtles that are in that movie. On the bottom, you can see the name of the character we're going to be looking at, which is Scumbug, the vermin, the company that makes these figures, which is Playmates Toys, and the company that owns the rights, which is Nickelodeon. Now you can see right here on the box that you can see the sewer layer basically all the bricks you can see the ooze drip in you can see the characters on the side that's a really good selling point at least for me as a kid and as an adult that's what made me walk into a toy store and be like I don't care what character I get I want that toy right there because I love the way the box looks playmates has always done a really good job at that you can always see the characters all over their boxes you know and, and then you can see a clear image of what's going to be inside the actual toy a clear bubble plastic bubble that's going to let you know all the accessories and everything that's inside so playmates always does a really good job at that now i've already measured these boxes boxes out for you guys they're almost eight almost eight inches long by eight and a half inches tall by two and a half inches in depth so keep that in mind when you guys are going to be displaying this on a shelf or putting it on a peg hook or something okay now turning it to the side, you guys can see the other characters that had already been released uh, from the first wave. All the turtles, Splinter, you can see Rocksteady, you can see um, Superfly and Leatherhead. All them figures had already been released first. Now, like I said, I'm not sure if these are the only four figures in wave two or if more are going to come. But so far, these are the only ones that I've found. This right here gives you a quick little bio on Scumbug. This bio, obviously, is just from this movie. It's it's only going to be based on this movie. So um, this isn't going to be like Scumbug's or, you know, original uh, or, you know, orientation from back in the day, you know, uh, in the old cartoons or anything like that. And, yep, you can see right there the Paramount logo, Playmates logo, lots of logos all over here. But, yep, let's go ahead and crack this baby open, all right? Okay, now here's Scumbug out of the box. You can see she comes with two extra pairs of wings right here in case you guys want to attach those or leave them unattached to save space on your shelf. She comes with some little spit up ooze right here that you guys can hook into her mouth. And then she comes with a little picture of Splinter right here. If you guys already seen the movie, you know why she has a picture of Splinter. If you guys haven't, I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at these wings. Now she already has some wings that are already attached onto her back, but then she has these ones right here that are a lot bigger and you guys just slide on, which I'll show you guys how that works in a second. But you just slide them on right there with that little piece, that little plastic piece hooks right onto the back, okay? But like I said, you guys can leave them off if you want to save space. She has this little bit of spit up right here or throw up, uh, just ooze or whatever, like dripping from her mouth right there. And then she has this little picture of Splinter right here, which is pretty cool. I like how it's all like kind of dirty and, you know, it looks, uh, you know, looks, looks weathered, looks used, you know. But yep, that's this picture of Splinter right there and just stands up by itself. And now taking a look at the figure, I've actually already measured her out for you guys. She comes out to three and three quarters, so almost four inches tall at the top of these little antler, um, little antennas right here at the top of her head. So almost four inches, so uh, three and three quarters. But yeah, this is how she looks. Check out Scumbug. Like I said, she already has these little wings uh, right here that you guys can close and make into like a beetle shell. Uh, she's obviously a cockroach basically, but, um, you guys can open them up and that's where you see those openings right there that you guys can attach those other wings, which I'll show you in a second. Okay. Now let's go ahead and take a look at her articulation. Now I think her head is meant to go up and down, but as you can see, it has like that Quasimodo back right there, which prevents, you know, the scumbug's head from either moving up or moving down really, but it does rotate around. So you guys can move it all the way around if you guys want. Uh, articulation arms, they do come up, they do rotate right here. No kind of bicep swivel, probably because they do rotate at the arm right there. The wrists do rotate right here at the claws. The claws don't open or close, but you know, it's soft plastic. So you guys can open them up if you guys want to put something in her hands, even though she doesn't really come with anything but that picture of Splinter. I'm sure if you guys want to put some other weapons in her hand, you guys can try and fit them in there. These two hands on the stomach doesn't move at all they wiggle like i said soft plastic but there's no kind of articulation no stomach muscles or anything like that um no ab joints or anything like that the legs do go up as you guys can see right here they do go up they do rotate around they do rotate at the knee as well and they do not really 
bend. They do bend, but it's like, you know, there you go. Kind of got to mess around with it or whatever. But they do bend, but they're just kind of, you know, stiff plastic right there at the knees. But this isn't like really hard, hard plastic. It's really bendable plastic. But there is no kind of articulation in the foot. The foot doesn't rock back and forth or go up and down. It's kind of just set in its own little pose. I'm sure you guys can try and bend it around a little bit. But, um, you know, the feet don't, like I said, the, the feet don't rotate around or anything like that. Now, as you guys can see right here in her mouth that she does have an opening. And that right there is where this ooze will end up fitting right in there. Make it look like she's spitting up the ooze, basically. Just like that. I think you guys might have seen that in the preview. So if you guys hadn't seen the movie, I think in the in the Mutant Mayhem preview, uh, Scumbug spitting up some ooze just like that. And then on the back, you guys can open up the shell right here. And then you guys can fit these little wings in there. And they just snap in. Like I said, if you guys want to save space, you guys don't have to hook these in or you guys can play with it and take it out. These are pretty fun figures for only being like nine bucks. With the wings open like this, it's about eight inches long, okay? So same height, just about eight inches long. So that's probably why you have the option to take those wings off or keep those wings on, okay? Now, like I said, this is a really cool figure. It's obviously not based off the old scumbug. It's going to be based off the new Mutant Mayhem movie. So that's why, um, you know, she looks the way she looks. And uh, instead of, you know, obviously being all bulky and muscly like the old one from the 80s. All right. But let's do a quick comparison real quick and then we'll move on to the other figures. All right. Okay, now here's a quick comparison of a bunch of other scumbugs that I have. This right here is the original late 80s, early 90s scumbug by Playmates Toys as well. So both of these are made by Playmates Toys. And you can see right here that this one obviously, uh, you know, is a guy. He has his uh, work shirt on. He's an uh, exterminator, basically. He has, uh, you know, ripped jeans and work boots and everything like that. So a bit of a different take on scumbug for the new movie. But uh, yeah, this right here is what it used to look like. And you can see they still have the same like antenna hair right there, kind of. Uh, coming out of the top of their head and then this right here is obviously a lot bigger a lot more detail this is by NECA toys uh, this came out a few years ago and you can see that these two basically are taken off of each other you know this one came out first this one came out second and then you can see that they took a lot of the the same inspiration from this scumbug uh, you know that NECA toys did for this one right here and yeah I just wanted to show you guys a quick little uh, comparison right here a couple other scumbugs that I have let's move on to the next figure Okay, up next we have Genghis Frog. You can see just like the last figure has a clear package window showing you the character inside and all the weapons and accessories. Same Mutant Mayhem logo, same turtles. All of these figures are going to have the same card backs. If you guys remember Playmates back in the day when they would come out with a character, it had that same brick like sewer like card back, but each... Each card back would just show different images of the character that you're going to be buying, you know, uh, like like right here is Leatherface and you can see Leatherface all over the uh, card backing. And then this right here is Genghis Frog, the original one. Um, well, this is the, the 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 new one that Playmates had just came out with. But uh, this is basically the old, you know, uh, off of the old Genghis Frog. And then you could see uh, the different images of him all over the card backing. So all the Mutant Mayhem movie uh, figures, from what I can tell, are all going to have the exact same card back, okay? Now, same measurements as well. Eight inches long, eight and a half inches tall by two and a half inches in depth. You can see right here it says Genghis Frog, the Croak and Bloke, Playmates Toys. And then right here on the right, it lets you know that it has tongue popping action. So it lets you know the action feature. And there's a little hole in the plastic right there where you can see his tongue. And then on the back, there's a little turn dial that if you guys push that up, his tongue kind of comes out. Now it's kind of stuck right now, but his tongue does come out and then you can just push it back down and his tongue can go back in. Same information that was on the last card backing besides the bio right here, which I'll read it for you guys. He may not be a large or menacing as his uh, compatriots, but Genghis Frog is part of the team, dang it. Okay, he's cute. He's cute, fine, but this cutie can bring the pain. So I forgot to mention something, that there is a mutant menace meter right here on the back of all of these different figures. It lets you know how uh, menacing these characters can be. So he only has one little ooze container right there, and... Um, I think Scumbug only has one as well. So uh, just let you know the, how menacing or how dangerous basically they are, okay? Now let's go ahead and crack him out of the box, all right? Okay, now here's Genghis out of the box. You can see it just comes with this little ax right here. Now this is a really small figure. You'd be surprised. It's actually only three inches where Scumbug was uh, three and three quarters. So this is a really small figure. He's just really wide. He's about, uh, about 
three and a half inches, you know, from uh, arm to arm, basically three and a half inches wide compared to how skinny most of the other figures are that are in this line so far. But like I said, just really short. His axe is basically as big as he is almost. So that's pretty cool. But let's go ahead and take a look at this axe real quick. Pretty cool looking axe. You can see it has different paint colors. So it's not just one solid gray color. It has like wood for the handle and then uh, has some texture and damage right here in the axe. Look like it's been uh, been through some stuff, some weathering basically. Look like it's been dinked around or dragged around basically. This little piece right here actually hooks onto his arm. So you can hook that onto his arm and then slide this piece and slide the wood handle into his hand. But this does come off. So if you guys want to slide that off, you guys can, okay? And then taking a look at the figure himself. It's a pretty cool looking figure. Obviously not as uh, as eye catchy as the old Genghis Frog was, or even the one by NECA Toys. But uh, you know it, they do pay some homage with the little uh, you know Hawaiian looking shirt with the uh, with the palm trees and stuff like that on it. I'm not sure if they're gonna come out with more of them because there was only one Genghis Frog in this movie compared to the old cartoon where there's like four different uh, you know four different of them. Uh, uh, Bona frogs, basically like four different ones. So in this movie, there was only one. And then you can see on his eyes, look like he has like those little fly eyes right there. Pretty cool. Some little texture on his nose. You can see like a little, uh, you know, little frog, little frog like acne, basically. Yep. Now his articulation, obviously his head doesn't move, body doesn't move at all. His legs, uh, his feet, excuse me, don't go up and down, but they do rotate around like that, but they don't go up. They don't go down. His arms do go up. They do rotate all the way around if you guys want. His wrists don't move. And if you guys want, you guys can take off his little uh, Hawaiian shirt right here. You guys just have to bend his arms a certain way and then it will come off. Okay. I'm not going to take it off, but if you guys bend his arms a certain way, you guys can get it off. All right. Like I said, no other kind of articulation, but there is a little action feature that's what i showed you guys earlier inside the box if you guys push this up which is kind of hard a little bit you guys kind of got to stick your nail in there but you guys can see his tongue does come out pretty far now maybe if you guys keep working at it it might end up being looser but right there that's how far it does come down so it almost comes down to his feet where his feet touch the ground at right there and then you guys can just wind it back up if you guys want all right and then his axe like i said just fits in his hand just like this you guys can slide it in oh Let's see if we can get that in there. And you guys actually don't have to hook this chain on, but if you guys want to hook the chain onto his wrist, you guys can, just like that. But it doesn't, his hand is, is strong enough to hold that ax by itself. So you guys don't actually need that. Maybe they thought when they made the toy that it would need some extra stabilization because the ax is basically as big as the figure. But you guys don't actually need this on if you guys don't want. You guys can hook this on to, you know, maybe someone else if you want. It doesn't bend too much. If you're sure if you bend it a lot, this plastic right here will break. But, uh... You know, I think it's just meant to hook onto his hand just like that, just like this, basically. So, but like I said, he does have enough strength in his hand to end up holding that axe just like he does. Yep, and that's pretty much it for this figure. Let's go ahead and do a quick comparison and we'll move on to Mondo Gecko, okay? Here you go, a comparison of a bunch of other Genghis frogs, basically. This right here is the original one from Playmates Toys. You can see uh, he came with some other accessories, but right here he just has his little, uh, little gun looking thing. I don't really know what this is, but just slides back and forth and he has his glasses you can see he has that hawaiian shirt and then this right here is one of the four turtles that um NECA toys had came out with basically you know based off of these based off the old cartoon and then uh, all of them have different jackets or a different weapon i just grabbed this one right here just because he had an axe uh you know just to show love to this new one right here from mutant mayhem so and then obviously you can see a big difference in size he's only three inches i think he's uh you know five maybe five and a half inches and then these figures right here are about six inches tall so yep quick little look at a bunch of different ones from over the years over the decades i guess <laughs> but yep let's move on to mondo gecko now up next like i said we're looking at mondo gecko the same size packaging the same clear window where you can see the character inside and all of his accessories right here you can see right here it says Mondo Gecko, the chill dude. Let you know right there it's made by Playmates Toys. All the same information that was on all the other boxes. But yep, this is what he looks like. On the back, all the same uh, images of all the same other characters. But right here it says Mondo is like such a chill dude, you know. Chia, he rolls with the uh, with the Superfly in his uh, Montley crew. So basically, you know, he's kind of like a rock and roll dude, basically. Now, his menacing meter is actually three ooze, can uh, three ooze canisters compared to the other two uh, figures we just looked at that only had one canister each. So he might be a little bit more dangerous or a little bit more radical, I guess. Whatever way you guys want to put that, all right? Let's go ahead and pop him out of the box. 
Okay, now here's Mondo out of the box. You can see he comes with this little frisbee looking thing right here. And then he comes with his classic skateboard that all the other Mondo Geckos figures uh, over the past decades have always came out with. Now taking a look at this, this just slides right into his hand. Like I said, I think it's like a frisbee or something basically. This right here is his skateboard. Let's see if we can get on that. There you go. It has a really cool looking sticker, but I don't really don't know what it says. Oh, it says Mondo. Sorry, I was holding it upside down. But yep, it has a little uh, sticker on it right there that says Mondo Gecko, basically. It has a little peg where his foot can uh, fit into, but it's all one clear color. One clear color. There's no like different color in the wheels or anything like that. Just that sticker right there that's on there, okay? Now, taking a look at the figure himself. Now, I actually really like this figure compared to the other two. I'm not really a big fan of the other two figures we just looked at, but this one right here just gives you a, a lot more nostalgia on Mondo Gecko himself, you know, from the cartoon and everything. Also, his backpack does come off. It was already on there. That's why I didn't take it off because out of the pack, it was already pegged in there. But this is his little backpack right here. just pegs onto the back right there, okay? Now, he has that really cool... Um, uh, skate right on the back of his tail if you guys remember the old figure had a, a skate on it as well and then um obviously he's not like bright green or like lime green like the old one he's like more of like that uh powderish powder blue powder lavender kind of purplish almost color but he still looks really cool i love the little hat he has on on his hair right here he has hair sticking out and um you know, the way his eyes look, he has a little more, uh, you know, character compared to the other figures that we just looked at. He has these little like hippie bands on rock and roll shirt, hippie shirt and stuff like that. His little Marty McFly uh, swim vest. So, yeah, I really do like this figure. Like I said, it's really small. Most of these figures are really small, but um, but he just, you know, he, he does show a lot of homage to the old character himself. Let's go ahead and measure him out for you guys real quick. He's going to come out to four and a half, almost four and a half inches tall. So uh, either, you know, an inch and a half to, uh, you know, almost a, almost an inch bigger than the last two figures we just looked at. But yeah, really cool looking figure. Let's go ahead and throw his accessories in his hands. Like I said, I think this, is, it doesn't really tell me what this is on the box. I'm going to guess it's like a, uh, um, like a Frisbee, basically. And then he has these little hex uh, holes on the bottom of his feet. And that's where you slide this little skateboard into. So let's go ahead and do that. Just like that. Let's see if we can turn his head. And basically that's how he end up standing up, okay? Just like that. Mm -hmm. Now let's go ahead and take a look at his articulation because he's going to have a little more articulation than the other ones. His head does rotate around back and forth. It doesn't really look up. It doesn't look down. His arms do go all the way around if you guys want them to. And now his elbows do bend. They do rotate as well. And then so does his uh, his hand right here, which kind of looks funny because it's only three little fingers. But his wrist does rotate around and so does his elbow right here, okay? Now, no kind of um, was it ab articulation or waist articulation or anything like that. And then the legs, they do rotate if you guys hold them right at the knee they do rotate around up at the top they do bend at the knee as as well as rotate as well and then they do rotate at the feet right here but they don't go up and down or rock back and forth okay now the back of his tail it does rotate around and you're actually going to need that because if you guys have it like this he really can't stand up see he'll just kind of lean over to the side so you kind of got to put that uh that tail pointing out back that way basically with the skate holding him up just like that okay and that's basically how he looks let's fit that back on let's get him on his skateboard real quick now here's a comparison of all the different mondo geckos that i have uh as far as you know the classic one and the one made by NECA and this new one from mutant mayhem this right here is the original one right here you can see his skateboard is just so much cooler playmates you know for the price i think these things are like four dollars or five dollars back in the day and you can see they put a lot more detail on the skateboard uh you know with the colors the sticker and everything on his shirt and everything he just looks like such a really cool punk rock you know looking guy looking lizard basically so pretty cool his tongue sticking out hat you know 
typical 90s, you know, late 80s, 90s look. I love that. I love this one. This will always be my favorite one right here. Obviously, this one's really cool because he's, you know, based off of the cartoon, based off of this figure as well. This one right here is made by NECA, so it's going to cost more money. So obviously, I have a lot more detail and articulation and based off of this figure in that cartoon as well. So, uh, you know, this one, like I said, one of the best out of these out of these Mutant Mayhem figures. And like I said, $9 for the price point of what figures are costing nowadays. He does look cool. I just... I, I guess I just wanted more. I would have wanted more on a skateboard and everything like that. But uh, I guess for them to keep these figures at a good price point for kids, you really can't beat what they're, you know, what they're giving you, especially when you get them on sale. And these figures go on sale for like seven, six dollars sometimes. So uh, I'm sure if you give it a little bit, these these won't even be nine ninety nine. These will be like six, seven bucks, like the first wave. Okay. But yeah, just wanted to show you guys a quick comparison of the other Mondo geckos. Let's move on to the last one, which is Wingnut. Okay, now last but not least, this right here is actually one of my favorite looking characters. Not my favorite character, but my favorite looking character because I'm a huge Batman fan. And, uh, you know, this character just, you know, obviously is based off Batman, you know. And uh, this is Wingnut right here. Like I said, same as all the other uh, boxes, the same as all the other dimensions for all the other boxes we looked at. You know, eight by eight and a half inches tall by two and a half inches in depth. Right here, you can see right here it says Wingnut, Robo Bat. Let you know the play has the Playmates logo, Nickelodeon logo up at top clear package window we can see his little grappling gun right here little bat boomerang or whatever that basically is little bat um you know obviously not a little pet but it looks like a little bat boomerang and like i said that's why i like this character so much he just you know looks like batman if you guys remember the old cartoon he even had a little uh screw loose you know screw loose hung around with him which was like robin and i even think in uh uh the 2012 nickelodeon um cartoon Ninja Turtle cartoon that had came out I think Mikey was reading a comic book if I remember that cartoon episode where Mikey was reading a comic book and it was basically like Batman and Robin but it was Wingnut and Screwloose and they came out of the comic book so that's why I like this character so much it's not that he even like you know did anything amazing in the movie or anything that really caught my attention it's just uh you know just basically that's based off of Batman Back of the box, the same as the other ones. Here's the bio. Wingnut is legitimately a horrific freak of nature. That's honestly the nicest way of putting it. Uh, the very sight of her nightmarish eyes and demonic wings will mess you up good. So in this movie, she was a female. You really couldn't tell if it was a female or not, just because a lot of these creatures barely even, uh, some of them didn't even really talk. They just kind of like, rawr, 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 you know, and then, um, I'm going to guess maybe the reason why some of them are females, even though we might not even knew that they were females, was probably because, um, you know, Seth Rogen, he brought, you know, he always brings in his whole team, all his friends in his movies. So maybe he had a, you know, a bunch of females and he's just like, hey, let's fill these characters, whether it's male or female. I guess it didn't matter because I couldn't tell in the movie and I went and seen this movie twice. Now, um, it has a mutant medicine meter of only two ooze containers, which is uh, actually only two compared to Mondo Gecko, which had three. Okay. Let's go ahead and pop him out of the box. Okay, now here's Wingnut out of the box. You can see it comes with the figure, comes with two wings, comes with a little battering, and then a little grappling hook. All this stuff that you ended up seeing inside the packaging, basically. Now, this figure stands four inches tall. So almost about the same as uh, Mondo Gecko that we just looked at because of how tall the ears are. Like I said, most of these figures are going to be a little bit smaller. And you can see he comes with two attachable wings, or she comes with two attachable wings that you guys can hook on. Like I said, uh, I think, you know, save space. You guys can pop them off if you guys want. Comes with a little batter ring right here. This isn't meant to be like a little like a little pet. If you guys remember the old Playmates Ninja Turtles, sometimes those figures will come with like a little pet, like a, like a little bulldog or something like that. Or, you know, he actually came with screw loose in the old figure, um, which he doesn't come with screw loose in here or she doesn't come with screw loose in here. But yep, a little batter ring right here. Then comes with a little grappling hook, basically. You can shoot and attach to things, which, you know, um, you know, wingnut can fly. So, but, you know, maybe to capture, uh, you know, capture, you know, the turtles or whatever, if you're shooting at them or something like that. All right. Now, taking a look at the character up close. Now, you can actually see that uh, this is why they call it a Robo Bat, because unlike the old figure, this figure is more like robotic. It looks like it's been mixed with some robotic engineering. Now, I had some trouble trying to get his... Uh, uh, Wingnut's arms to move. I didn't have to heat it up in water. I just took my fingernail and I kind of pressed it between the plastic because I couldn't get the arms to articulate. I was like, maybe they can't articulate, but I still can't get them to really rotate. I mean, I don't know if I'm like bending plastic right here or not because I've tried to get it to rotate and it doesn't, just goes right back to the same position. So I'm not sure if the arms actually rotate up here or not, but they do. Um, 
you know, they do go up and down right here on that little hinge joint that you see right there, okay? Now, the elbows do go back and forth right here. The wrists do rotate around right here on both arms. Now, the little, uh, what is it? Um, ah, sheesh, what's it called? Oh, utility belt. <laughs> little utility belt. Looks like it's pegged in on each side, but it does like, you know, you can push it down with your hand if you want and it'll kind of go back up. Really soft plastic, but it looks like it's pegged in right here and right here on each side. Okay. Now the legs, if you guys hold them right here, you can see they do rotate way up here at the kneecaps. They do bend and they do rotate, but the feet actually don't rotate. None of the figures feet go down up or rock back and forth, but this one right here, the feet actually don't rotate around. They only rotate at the kneecap right there. So, but yeah, a little bit of a different take on wing nut, like I said, with it being a female rather than a male. And then with it being like a robot instead of, uh, you know, just being, uh, you know, a mutated bat basically that turned into basically Batman. <laughs> and this is what the back of it looks like. I'm not really sure what this big old, uh, circle right here is. I'm going to guess because, um, uh, you know, I think Wingnut kind of sat in there in the old on the old figure. We'll take a look at that in a second. But I think Wingnut sat in there if I if I can remember, at least sat on the back of them. So, and then it has two little slots right here where you guys can hook those wings. There, are, there's no articulation in the tail, but the wings right here. I actually thought you hooked them in right here, but that's like the little claw hand part of the wing. You actually hook them in right here. So you kind of just where is it at? It's right there. Slide that in. You guys can see it right there. It kind of snaps in and it gives them a pretty good wingspan. And I'll go ahead and measure that out for you guys, okay? With his wingspan, he's about eight and a half inches long, okay? So same height because the wings don't go taller than his ears. But, you know, he does take up, uh, like I said, about eight inches right here with his wingspan. Let's go ahead and throw his uh, accessories in his hands. He does have two open hands, so he'll be able to hold both of these. Got his grappling hook in one. And I'm not really sure. Maybe I'll try and fit it in right here. Like that. There we go. And right there's how he looks with his accessories in his hand, okay? Now he's a little bit top heavy, obviously, because of his wings. But yep, that's how he holds his little grappling hook. That's how he holds his little battering. I really like this figure. So far, this is my favorite figure uh, out of the all of Wave 1 and Wave 2. Sorry, I sneezed. But yeah, so far, this is my favorite figure. Like I said, it, you know, it could be that I'm biased that I like Batman, but I just love the way he looks. I, lo I love Wingnut. I love the way he looks, and I love his backstory. Let's go ahead and do a quick comparison real quick, all right? Okay, now you guys can see in this comparison, this is the new Mutant Mayhem Wingnut. This right here is the original one from the late 80s, early 90s that Playmates had came out with. And these two right here are from NECA. I only threw Screw Loose in there because he came with Wingnut basically just like the old Playmates figure did. I'm not sure why Screw Loose wasn't in this movie or why they just, even if he wasn't in the movie, why they just didn't throw the figure in or make a figure for this because he's a classic character. You know, they're supposed to be together. That's the way it's supposed to be. Now, this right here, like I said, is the old Playmates wing nut. That screw loose sitting on the top. You guys can remove them if you guys want. But, you know, just looking at all the detail in the wings, you know, the mechanized wings right there, uh, you know, just the way he looks, his costume, everything, you know, his grappling gun, his, uh, his utility belt, his claws on his feet looks so cool. And I got to say, this is a really cool looking figure too. I do like this figure for the price point of what, uh, you know, like I said earlier, Playmates charges for these toys right now compared to, you know, Hasbro and, and, uh, you know, the, the DC multiverse figures, you know, toys can get pretty expensive nowadays. So keeping them at a kid's price, I can understand not being able to do as much as you used to do back in the day, but gosh, look at what Playmates, you know, look, look at what Playmates used to do back in the day. Like I said, no, not harping on this one. This is a really cool figure for the price point. But uh, I just wanted you guys to see the difference of, uh, you know, this is the same toy company, you know, same toy company just decades later and uh, see the difference. Now, obviously, the neck are going to be more expensive. And, uh, you know, this figure isn't going to look like this one because this is based off of its own movie. This one right here is just based off of the old cartoon, based off of these old Playmates figures right here. And then you can see, uh, you know, Screw Loose is just so much bigger back there than even the old Playmates Screw Loose that's on the back of him right here. But yeah, just wanted to do a quick little uh, comparison for you guys. Let's go ahead and look at them all together and end this review, all right?
All right, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed that look today at wave two of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem movie figures. These figures are pretty cool. They're not the, my favorite figures, I would say, but for little kids for the price point of nine or ten dollars. And like I said, the first wave is like six or seven dollars right now on sale. You really can't beat that deal. They're not going to give you as much articulation as the NECA figures if you guys watch the comparison. And they're not going to give you as much detail as the old 80s, 90s Playmates figures, because back then plastic cost a different. You know, the cost to make these figures was a lot different than what it is now. So, and the fact that NECA and the old figures, the old 80s and 90s Playmates figures, were all based off of that cartoon. And these figures, these new ones, are based off the Mutant Mayhem movie figure. So that's why they're not going to look the same. The same clothes, the same tie, the same gender, the same uh, accessories, because they're not based off of that same cartoon or that same movie. Well, I hope you guys liked this review. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. And until next time, Kawabunga!